Hey, what's up everybody? Nick back with another Photoshop tutorial. This one is the first in hopefully a long series of tutorials uh, geared specifically towards the DIY musician. And that basically means any independent artist or band that wants to start taking a little bit more control of the visual aspects of their music. Now, if you pay attention to my channel, you of course know that I have been a musician most of my life. I absolutely love playing guitar. It is my you know, pastime. It's a passion of mine. You know, I don't play golf. I play music. Um, professionally, what I do for you know living is I do graphic design, so I'm trying to combine both of these things because there's not a lot of resources out there for musicians in terms of learning how to use tools such as Photoshop, Illustrator, and other things like that, specifically for um, things that are relevant to the music industry. And anyone who makes music now knows that as it has become extremely easy to make decent sounding music, even at home, there is a ton of competition out there. And you, of course, you know, the first thing and always the most important is to make great music that people connect with. But because there is so much competition and there's just so much stuff out there, you really need to be able to differentiate your music from everybody else. And it's always great when you can start to do some of that stuff on your own because take it from me as a graphic designer, uh, we do not usually uh, work extremely cheap. So you can save a bunch of money, take a little bit of control over all of your visual, uh, visual materials and the way you represent yourself. And you'd be surprised, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Now, if you're worried at all that maybe your uh, art skills or drawing skills leave a little bit to be desired, or maybe you've never even opened up Photoshop before, uh, really don't worry. All these videos, uh, specifically this series for the DIY musician, is geared specifically towards musicians, of course, but also people who have little to no experience in design and Photoshop. These are very beginner, entry-level Photoshop tutorials specifically targeted for musicians that want to learn how to do some of this stuff on their own. So don't be afraid. Uh, all this stuff is going to move very slow, and I'm going to do my best to explain everything along the way. If you like what you see, please like, comment, share. Just let me know what you think. Because the feedback from these first couple of videos is really going to dictate where it goes from here. And ideally, what I'd like to do is show any musician out there who's interested how to make things like their own album artwork. And not just, you know, your basic jewel case or something like that. But, you know, different packages such as eco wallets, digipacks, jackets, and of course, the requisite jewel case. Although not that many bands are using those anymore. But... Um, you know, things like band logos, business cards, flyers, all different types of flyers, really, uh, promotional items, graphics specifically for, you know, musicians' social media pages, and really all of that. So if you like what you see, leave me some feedback below, and uh, that's going to help me kind of format the uh, videos going forward. So in this video, we're going to start kind of simple, and something that's really cool when it comes to actually creating the CD itself. One question that my students always have when we get into the actual creation of the graphics for the CD itself is, hey, how do we make text in a perfect circle? And you know, maybe you've seen this, it goes all the way around the edge of the CD. And just to show you what I'm talking about, let me go ahead and turn this on real quick. And you see all the way around the edge of the CD, we have this small circular text. And this is a great way to fit a ton of extra information on your CDs without eating up a lot of visual real estate. You can put things like copyright information, where it was recorded, or possibly even a track list. So it's a really nice thing to be able to do. And it's also one of those things that in Photoshop, uh, if you're first getting into it, it's um, not quite as easy as it should be because it doesn't really jump out at you. There's a couple of steps involved in the technique, but once you do it, it is actually really easy. Now, for this particular video, again, we're starting kind of small, we're starting simple. Um, I have some CD artwork here for an LA-based uh, musician uh, named Sam Morrow, who I did some CD artwork for. Uh, super talented uh, guy, you should check him out, sammorrowmusic.com. Uh, he's got a just absolutely amazing voice. So we're gonna be using this CD artwork just as an example. I'm using Photoshop CC Creative Cloud, which is the new version. Um, um, it's actually extremely cheap if you go to adobe.com if you don't have it yet or you're afraid to buy it um, It's now switched to a subscription service So it's a small monthly fee instead of the you know six to seven hundred dollars that Photoshop used to cost up front So it's now a lot more attainable to pretty much anybody But you know what honestly if you're in the last version of Photoshop CS6 the two programs CS6 and CC are 98% the same program so you're going to be looking at almost the exact same thing that I have on my screen, even though I'm on Photoshop CC. So just to show you what we have here, this is what's called a CD template. 
And as we can see here, obviously, if you're a musician, you've clearly seen a CD before. But uh, this is what artwork looks like before it is printed directly onto CDs. And this is a, a template that it has taken directly from a website called discmakers.com. And Disc, Wake, or Disc Makers is one of many different choices that musicians have um, as far as printing and packaging their own CDs. Their uh, prices are usually really good. Personally, I've used Disc Makers about five or six times, and it always turns out great. Um, basically, you upload your music and your artwork, and they print and package and mail your CDs to you. It's actually really nice. And uh, depending on the package that you're doing, it's usually between $1.50 to $3 each. Obviously, more complex things like a jewel case is going to cost, you know, on the higher end of that spectrum. But as we can kind of see here, um, it might be a little overwhelming to look at if you've never seen one of these before. But let's just kind of break it down because it's actually really simple. Now, if you're new to Photoshop, over here on the right, this is our layers window. And I'm not going to get into the layers right now. Um, feel free to uh, check out any of the numerous tutorials out there for how layers work. Um, but I have right here a layer called template guides and that's what I'm looking at right here it's all these blue pink and green lines now if you see the pink line which is right here ideally in a perfect world that is where your graphics are actually going to stop that's going to be the edge of that graphic on the CD but um, you know if you're thinking about that then you would think oh that's all we need is the pink line because you know printers are perfect but alas printers never perfect uh, the machines that cut things out, never perfect. So that's why we have these other two lines. We have this blue line going all the way around the edge. All right. Any photos or graphics that you're using, even if it's just something as simple as a solid color, needs to extend all the way to the blue line all the way around the edge. And anything important, such as text, should always be inside this dotted green circle. And what that means is if the printer or the machine that's cutting this out is just a little bit off, um, you're not going to have you know, any weird white page that's empty around the edge. So you've got some extra graphic around the edge just in case it's a little bit off. And you've also got some extra room on the inside so that none of your text accidentally gets cut off because you don't want to print up a bunch of CDs where the first letter of your band name is just slightly cut off because, hey, that's not going to look very good. So when you download this from discmakers.com, open it in Photoshop, it's gonna look exactly just like this. Now over on the right, in my layers window, I have a couple of things. Now of course I have the artwork that you just saw a second ago. And what I did is I actually compressed the um, numerous layers that were involved in that project, just so this was a little bit simpler. I didn't want you to look over here and see a million layers and get totally confused. So basically what we've got here, our background is white. Now, this is just personal preference, but what I usually like to do is to fill it in with black when I first open it up. So what I do is I just click over here in my toolbar to select black as my main color. With black is always along the bottom of the color picker right here. And I always do Option Delete, which is the keyboard shortcut for the Paint Bucket tool. And if you ever use Microsoft Paint, I'm pretty sure pretty much everybody has at some point. It's a dark and evil program. but uh, <laughs> Pretty much the paint bucket, which is the one click and fill, is it exists in Photoshop. It is actually hidden over here behind the gradient tool. But I usually just use a keyboard shortcut. Sorry, my cat is attacking my chair. That's not cool, cat. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So anyways, the paint bucket, it's here. But I usually use a keyboard shortcut because it is something that you would do a little bit more frequently than you might think. Option delete will fill in that background layer with black. So now that it's black, we can actually see those lines a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the layer on that has the CD artwork on it, which is right there. And again, I've compressed uh, multiple layers into just one to kind of keep it simple. And in a future video, we're gonna explore the actual creation of CD graphics from the ground up. But in this case, we're just gonna keep it simple and learn how to make the circular text around the edge of the CD. So this graphic extends all the way to the blue lines around the edges, which is what we want. And also any text, in this case the logo and the CD title here, is inside these dotted green lines, which means I never have to worry about that accidentally getting cut off when it prints. So what I usually like to do when I'm working on CDs is to actually, because I don't know about you, but template lines are always extremely distracting, but when it comes to a CD, you do kind of need them. Now you can, of course, turn them off and on whenever you need to line things up. 
But what I usually like to do is create um, what I call a preview layer. And think about this almost like a stencil. I'm gonna turn this on just to show you what I'm talking about. It looks just like this. And when I turn the template guideline layer off, I can see that I can you know, obviously clearly see that this is a CD and I get a really nice idea of what it's gonna look like when it prints out on the CD itself. And it's a lot less distracting than this template guideline layer right here. So let me show you how do I do this. I'm gonna delete this layer and we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna make a new layer by clicking my new layer button down here next to the trash can right there. And I'm going to select my elliptical marquee tool, which is right up here. Now the marquee is one of Photoshop's many selection tools, which allows you to basically isolate um, any specific area of a layer. So I'm gonna click the elliptical marquee. Now obviously CD is a perfect circle. And when I just start clicking with the ellipse, you can kind of see that we're making all these ovals, which is not what we want. If I hold down the shift key, and now this is the tricky part because we have to do our best to try and get it to be the exact size of the CD. If you make a mistake, that's okay. Just Command Z to undo and try it again. I'm gonna hold down Shift, and I'm gonna draw out a circle. That looks pretty good. And now what I'm gonna do is actually use my arrow keys. This is called nudging. Nudging is totally clutch in Photoshop, by the way. It uh, is a, something I use all the time. And I'm gonna do my best to get that centered. That looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do, because if I, for example, I'm going to pick a color like red, or maybe a gray like we had a second ago. And if I do Option Delete, which is what we did just a second ago to fill in the background, the problem now is that it's going to fill in the exact part that I want to uh, basically be able to see through. So if I right click anywhere inside the circle and select Inverse, what this is gonna do is pick anything except, or sorry, anything but what I've already selected, basically meaning all of the space around that circle. Now if I do Option Delete, it's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna do Command D. Now Command D deselects or makes these uh, dotted lines, they're called marching ants, go away. There we go. And I'm gonna do this one more time for the center of the CD. Same technique, hold Shift, and draw a circular, or sorry, <laughs> a circle with the elliptical marquee, and then Option Delete, Command D to deselect. Now, if this is a little bit off, that's totally fine. This doesn't need to be pixel perfect. This is just to give us an idea of what it's actually going to look like uh, once we're done. So, if I turn my template guides layer off now, I can see that I've got a really nice preview layer for this CD. This is something that uh, personally, whenever I'm sending something back and forth with a client or a musician band that I'm working with, I always like to send them this because it looks a hell of a lot better than sending them something like this. Plus, it's better for you because you just get a better idea what your CD is actually gonna look like. So anyways, let's get into the main part of the video, which is learning how to create circular text. Now for this, what I wanna do is I'm gonna turn my preview layer off which is that one that we just created. And I'm going to turn the template on because we do want this text to fit perfectly around the edge of the CD. And there's always the chance that that preview layer was maybe a couple pixels off. So to start creating circular text, if you click and hold on Photoshop's type tool, which is the capital T in the toolbar, you're gonna notice that uh, we don't have an option here for circular text. We've got the horizontal type tool which is the one that uh, you're honestly gonna use probably about 99% of the time. You can also do things like a vertical type tool, but you don't really use that very often. So what we have to do in order to create circular text is to create what's called a path. And a path is simply something in Photoshop for the text to follow. So we need to make a circular path that our text is gonna lock onto and follow and allow us to write uh, text in a perfect circle. So to create a circular path, you wanna click and hold on Photoshop's shape tool, which if you're just opening up the program for the first time, is usually default set to the rectangle tool. And we wanna pick one called the ellipse tool, which is right here. Uh, ellipse is gonna let us make any kind of circular shape that we want to, in a similar way to the elliptical marquee that we used earlier. The elliptical marquee, of course, is a selection tool, whereas the shape tool 
in this case the ellipse in particular, is used to create actually like solid color shapes and things like that. So if you ever wanted to make something like a, uh, just as an example, not to go on a tangent, but if I wanted to make just some solid colored circles, I can use the shape tool to do that. I'm just gonna undo. And you know, this is a topic for another video, but the fill up here is the color that the circle is gonna be filled with. And the stroke is the color of a border. So just to show you what that would look like, if I pick a stroke to be blue, and I make it a little bit larger just so we can actually see it a little bit better, and I make a circle. There we go. Now layers underneath. So you can see that I have a circle that is uh, you know, really nice, a Zoidberg pink, and it's got this blue border, which again is the stroke. But in this case, we don't want to make a shape. What we want to do is we want to make a path, and it's actually really easy. Right up here at the top left, instead of shape, we just select path, all right. Now here's the tricky part. Kind of like earlier, we want to make sure to hold shift because we want to make a perfect circle. Again, CDs are obviously perfect circle. And we want to do our best, and it's okay if it's not perfect, um, we want to do our best to try and do a circle that is generally the same size as the edge of the CD. So I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to do my best to draw a circle. And again, if it's slightly off, that's actually okay. And there we go, we can see that I have made a path. And what a path looks like is just a really thin line and it's always gonna have these little dots, uh, usually in um, the axis points along the X and Y axis. So now that we've created our circular path, let's go back to our type tool, which is the capital T. Now up here at the top, of course, if you've ever used something like Microsoft Word or Apple's Pages, you're, um, you're gonna be right at home with some of Photoshop's basic text options, such as changing the font, which is right here changing the size, which is here, and of course the color, which is right here. Now, because in this case my CD artwork is relatively dark, I do wanna make sure that I've changed the color to something a little bit brighter. It doesn't have to be the you know, final color that I'm gonna choose, but just something so that I can actually see it. And for now, I'm also gonna pick a font that's just a little bit simpler. Not that this is a great font to use all the time, it's super basic and, and honestly a little bit boring, but for the sake of the video, it's gonna be nice and easy to read. I'm just gonna pick Arial. All right, uh, no affiliation to the Little Mermaid, of course. Uh, I'm gonna pick regular right here, and I'm gonna choose kind of a small font at about tw 12 point, and I may end up going a little bit smaller uh, once we actually start typing and see how it's gonna look. Because, you know, when it comes to this text around the edge of the CD, you want it to be, you know, kind of with this nice uh, happy medium where it's easy to read, but it's also really about as small as it can possibly be. So I'm gonna start with 12 and my font is set to white, and I have my font selected at Arial, and this is, again, gonna be just a nice, simple font for around the edge of the CD. You can obviously explore some other options on your own if you want. Now, in Photoshop, my cursor at the moment is, uh, you can see it is kind of like a, a traditional typing cursor, but it's surrounded by a box, and this means that if I were to click right now, it's going to create brand new text, which is not what I wanna do. The trick here, and you know, if you make a mistake, don't worry about it, you can always undo and kind of uh, try it again. Watch how the cursor changes as I bring it right over the top of this path. And you can see right there, it goes from a box to the traditional typing cursor with a, kind of a little squiggly line over it. That is what we're looking for. That means that if I were to click and start typing right now, it's gonna automatically lock onto this path. Now, just to show you, um, you know, what could happen if you accidentally click in the wrong place, like for example, if I click here, and I start typing, what it's gonna do is gonna keep that text inside, uh, right inside that path that we made, which sometimes, you know, that could be what you want if you're doing something like, oh, I don't know, a book layout, or you're trying to get some text to stay inside of a specific shape, but that's not what we want. We want it to go around the edge. Now, text mode in Photoshop is a little frustrating for beginners, only because if I'm typing, which I can see this box around my text, and of course, if I type, you can see that it is typing. A lot of the other stuff that's in the program, such as menu options, are grayed out, and you know it can be a little frustrating because you know key commands such as undo or you know things like that just don't work until you exit text mode. So just remember, if you're working in Photoshop and you're a beginner, this check mark up here at the top of the program is kind of like always your ejector seat. So if something's not working, if you're uh, free transforming or in type mode or anything like that, just click the check mark right here. That's going to get you out of text mode. Now, of course, I need to undo at that point. So, got rid of that text that I just made. 
So I'm gonna click right on this path. And again, I'm looking for that cursor with the little squiggly line. And I'm just gonna click once. And now I can see that I'm starting to type. Now, of course, I'm not gonna waste time in the video typing on an actual track list or credits like that, but you can see that the text is automatically locking on to that entire circle. And I'm just gonna get it to kind of go around most of the edge. Now let's say I realize, because honestly this text maybe is a little bit too big for the edge of the CD, I want to shrink it a little bit. I can do Command A on a Mac, of course, I believe it's Control A on a PC, honestly it's been years since I've touched a PC. I'm going to go up to 10 point and just shrink it down a little bit. And that's a little bit better, but I might even try 8 point. Now 8 point is traditionally a little bit small for text that you want to be like uh, really legible. But uh, for something like credits around the edge of the CD, those can be things that you know maybe need to look a little bit closer to read. They don't need to necessarily jump off of the CD. If I was doing a track list, for example, something that does really need to be uh, easy to read, I would probably go with at least 10 or 12 point for the font. All right. So I've got this text around this circle, but obviously uh, right now we can clearly see there's a problem, maybe two problems actually. First of all, it's not actually centered on the CD. And second of all, it may not even be the exact size that we want. So let's take a look at how we size this and get it to fit perfectly in the CD. So let's go ahead and click the check mark to get out of text mode right up here. And now what I want to do, and of course in Photoshop there's always you know five different ways to do the same thing. So I'm just going to show you what uh, my technique is. If you have a different way to do this, uh, by all means, please share it below. Um, I have my text layer highlighted right here. Over on the right in my layers window, my text is the one that is highlighted in blue. And what I want to do now is go into free transform mode by doing command T on the keyboard. I believe it's control T on PCs. And this is a basic command you're going to use uh, just constantly in Photoshop. It's, it's used anytime that you need to resize, rotate, and it can also be used to move things in the program. So what I want to do is I'm going to try to move just by clicking and dragging anywhere inside this box. Um, the little dot here in the middle, for some reason, everybody goes there first. And what that is, just so you know, is actually a pivot point. So if I move it up here in the corner, and then I rotate this right here. Sweet. There we go. You can hear the beautiful uh, Burbank Airport in the background. Uh, thank you, Burbank. Um, if you move it up here in the corner, and now I rotate, you see how it's pivoting on that point? That's what that little dot is. So for the most part, especially for this, just leave it right in the middle. Now what else is a little weird here is you're going to notice that the path is moving, that line that we created, but our text actually isn't. And this is just a little strange, uh, especially if you're first getting into this. But if, as soon as I get out of free transform mode, if I click this check mark up here at the top, again, don't forget the check marks, always kind of like your ejector seat. If I click the check mark, you're going to see the text is going to immediately lock back onto that path. So we're getting there. But again, we want to make sure that anything important when it comes to the CD is inside this dotted green line. And I can clearly see that while it looks okay up here along the top, it is a little bit too big because it's falling out here along the bottom. So I want to go back into free transform mode, Command T. I always want to hold Shift and use the corners because that's going to keep the proportions kind of locked. And this is just a little bit of trial and error. We want to try and shrink it just a little bit and you have to really, you know, the best way to do this is just to use your eyes and try to line that path up in relation to the dotted green line around the edge. Now, of course, if um, well, it is a lot of trial and error, so if you make a mistake, feel free to just hit the uh, check mark to kind of see where it's at. Like that actually looks uh, pretty much perfect. Nice. All right. That looks pretty good. But if you hit the check mark, or of course you can always just hit return to get out of free transform mode, and you realize like, oh, that's not right. You can either undo or just go right back into free transform mode and try it again. Now, in this particular case, uh, I'm not really digging so much where the text is sitting on the CD because it's totally eating up some visual real estate up here at the top and clashing a lot with the logo. So I'm gonna go back into free transform mode, Command T, and I'm gonna rotate it and hit return, let's see that's where we're at. Okay, gotta do a little bit more. There we go, that's a little bit better. Um, now, of course, with this CD, I don't wanna cover up Sam's face down here, and I also don't wanna cover up any of the logos, so that's probably about as good as it's gonna get. I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit. 
Try that. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Cool. Yeah, it looks pretty decent. Now, in this particular case, uh, let's do this. Get out of free transform mode. I'm going to turn the preview layer back on, and I'm going to turn the guidelines off. This is going to give us a little bit of a better idea of what it's going to actually look like on the CD. Now, depending on your artwork, in this case, honestly, I feel like the white is just way too bright, way too distracting. You could, of course, try some different color options, like maybe some grays or possibly some browns or something like that that would kind of fit this, uh, you know, the CD artwork that we have here. But I'm just going to take the opacity. And opacity, of course, is the level of transparency. And by default, all layers in Photoshop are usually set to 100. Right here in the Layers window, if I click and I re reduce this down to about, let's say, 60. What that's doing is it's making my white text just a little bit more see-through and basically blending it in with the background, that uh, dark photograph underneath. So it's appearing to be a little bit darker. And what's nice about that is you can still read it, but it doesn't stand out quite as much, which really with the circular text around the edge of the CD, you really never want it to be distracting or take away from the actual CD artwork itself. Unless of course you're using some really large text and it is in fact part of the CD artwork. So that's how you make circular text in Photoshop. It's a really handy thing to use anytime you're creating your CDs. And again, if you liked what you saw in this video, please share, comment, like. I really appreciate all that stuff. And if the feedback is good from the first couple of videos, um, I'm going to have some more on the way pretty soon. Uh, I'm just going to try my best to kind of keep them coming uh, in my spare time between classes and working and all of that stuff. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more videos.